system that promises to revolutionise parking on the street. Ah, well, what is it? Well, at a meeting next Tuesday, councillors are going to, uh, well, they're recommended to approve a trial which will see smart sensors actually placed in parking bays at various locations around the city, which can tell drivers where there's a space through their smartphones. It all, all sounds very clever. Uh, there's a version of the scheme that's been used in Westminster and, and also San Francisco, which is even more um, exciting. But this will be the first linking up the information with real-time bus timetables so people can choose whether or not to dump the car and hop on a bus into the city. It's very, very interesting, isn't it? Martin uh, Dehaver is from Ethos VO, the uh, company working on the project. Hello, Martin. Yeah, good morning. Right, good morning. So, so, I mean, I've seen sensors in car parks before, but this is, what, on the street? It is, yeah. We're putting, uh, planning to put sensors on the street, but the, the cleverness here is not just knowing where the parking spaces are now. We're actually going to be predicting where they are in the future so that when you plan your journey into Brighton, you'll be able to drive straight to a parking space, park and get on with your day. How can you predict that a parking space is going to come vacant in the future? Uh, well, we use some clever... We look for patterns in information, that's what we, we do, and we're using artificial intelligence and neural network techniques, all very clever stuff, to really look at what happened in the past to predict what's going to happen in the future. So a parking space A, which might be next to a news agent, people come and they go you know, after, you know, after five minutes and that's, that's the regular pattern for that spot and, and you will le- the, you know, the software will learn that. Exactly, yeah. Every space has got a different characteristic and we'll look at those patterns and then predict what's going to happen in the future. But the idea really is that it will feed into your sat-nav so you can then just plan your journey, you'll have a good idea of where the parking's going to be when you arrive, maybe when you're half an hour outside of town and you'll go straight to the space and you can just get as close to where you actually really want to be because parking's not the end of your journey, it's just a way of getting to where you want to be. Crikey, that's clever. That's really clever. Will it work? Absolutely, yeah. Well, we've got some of the best brains from various universities across the UK working on this. And, in, you know, we've got some, you know, different different approaches. And the idea is to come up with the best possible solution. So, very excited about trying this out in Brighton and uh, getting it into the hands of people to hopefully make their day a little bit easier. Uh, so, in a way, we're a bit of a guinea pig, really, aren't we? We're, we're sort of seeing whether... <laughs> I'm not being rude about that, but, I mean, you've got, you're basically trying it out. Absolutely, yeah. It, it's, it's something that it's, it's new. It is a new thing. I mean, the world's not seen this approach to parking before. We've got parking sensors that tell you where the spaces are now, but what you want to know is where it's going to be when you arrive. And that's the, that's the bit that's different for Brian. Right. And hopefully other cities will take it on too. How does the sensor actually... I mean, I don't, don't need the wiring diagram or anything like that, but, you know, how, how does it sense that there's a car over the, over the top of it? Um, well, there are different ways. I mean, you can do it with infrared, you can do it with uh, what they call it, uh, an inductive sensor. There are different ways. There's also a way of doing it using uh, mobile phone signals as well. And that was actually developed in Brighton, that technology. So there are different ways of doing it. So we will we'll choose the best sensor for the particular location. But there are many different, many different approaches. But detecting a big thing like a car is relatively straightforward. Right. I... I, I, I you... I'm just amazed at the complexity of something like this. Do you, do you ever look at this project and you think, we'll never pull this off? Do you know what I mean? I mean it just seems so so huge what you're trying to do. Um, well, I think, yeah, I think it's, it's essential because congestion and air quality is a real problem in every major city around the world. It's not just the UK. I mean, the opportunity is really huge here. If you look at some of the Chinese cities, they have very, very severe problems with air quality and also congestion. And this is a way of cutting down both of those because if people are driving straight to spaces, the, um, it saves time, they're, they're not cruising around at slow speed, their cars are running more efficiently when they're driving to the space. So the thing is, it, the, the upside for this, the win for this, is so huge, it's worth the effort. It's worth putting all this time, expense and brain power into coming up with a solution because it's not just about parking, it's about actually making our air cleaner, saving, I mean in the UK, something like 80,000 people a year die early due to poor air quality. And people cruising around for parking is part of that mm. part of that picture. Well, if you crack it, ka-ching. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, really <laughs> worth it. There's a lot of, really lot of cities out there. Thanks very much indeed. Cheers, Mark. Thank you so much. Uh, 30 you. minutes tonight. Uh, BBC Sussex, Neil Pringle here. Let's get some headlines.